Uh, and he was pretty young when he passed on. He was in his late 40s. Alan Dad was 49 when he passed on. Um, obviously, you know, uh, he, he had to bear the brunt of a lot of stress and strain mm. uh, playing professional golf at that level, not being able to make a, an, an affordable living because of the system. Um, so he had to endure a lot of that. Uh, and I think that t did take its toll on him. Uh, you know, by the time they lifted the ban, and I think, you know, most people know that he was banned from playing golf in 1966, and he was only uh, allowed to play in open tournaments in 1972. So that was six years of his life that he lost, and he could never regain that. You know, had it been different, had the system been different, yeah. you know, records have shown. You know, he won on debut, he won on a foreign country, um, and, and that augurs well in terms of what he could have achieved had the system not failed him then. And of course, you know, the famous... Uh, I read somewhere they called it the prize giving that shook the world, right? And it's that incident uh, after winning the Natal Open. It's it's famous. It's uh, it's you know it's, it's a story told by generations. Correct. Uh, about what happened when Papa Sugalam won the uh, Natal Championships, and when we were last on the radio, if you remember, in mm. 2015, I think. Yes. Uh, and maybe even earlier than that, um, I had a gentleman by the name of Anumagam Pat Perumal, yes. who sadly passed on now. That's and, right. May he still rest in mm. peace. He called in to say he knew your dad, and Uncle Pat uh, was uh, also part of the country club Co Correct, yes. Uh, you know, Pat was the caddy master, right. and, you know, it was rather unusual for a non-white to be a caddy, caddy master in those days. Um, you know, golf in, it, in its entirety had been reserved for the elite, yeah. and, you know, dad broke all barriers by playing the sport. Much to his detriment, though, in the latter stages, because um, that, that, that led to the banning. And, you know, uh, obviously with the banning meant that he couldn't make a living. But, uh, you know, having said that, uh, 1963, I think, was, was really a, an, an amazing year for him because he was given an opportunity to play in, in South Africa um, after coming back as a Dutch Open champion in 1959. Right. So bearing in mind that was four years later. So and that, yeah, correct. You know, the European PGA allowed him to play. South African PGA wouldn't allow him to play. And that's just purely based on the apartheid policies of the day? I, I, I think more than that, there were a lot of uh, laws of the land, like the Group Areas Act, the Liquors Act, and all of that. So entry into the clubhouse um, was an issue. Um, allowing fans to get to Durban Country Club was an issue. So he couldn't use the change room facilities that the other players were using. He could, you know, I mean, he couldn't go into a meal with the other players. Definitely not. It was illegal at the time. Correct. Sickening, you know, sickening thing, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. You know, and and I think that was something that the, uh, Dad couldn't understand. Yeah. You know, all he wanted to do was to achieve and play and do something that he loves the best. 